Hi. Um, today we're going to be looking at a problem of a mis of a sandwich with two different materials, um, uh, where material B with a young with a lower Young's modulus is going to be in the center, um, surrounded by two material A's which are going to be on the outside of equal thickness, and in this question, the first part of the question, uh, tries to get us to estimate the thickness of or the width of material of the center if it was made of material a that would give the same flexural mod modulus as what we see here part two then is find the flexural stiffness of this and then part three is how much weight is saved by using material b in the center given uh, two different densities of the material I guess in the x direction, the weight w of the materials would be evenly distributed. And then if you look in the y direction, you'll notice that the center of gravity would be through the center of it. So we don't have to play around with any tricky equations and um, trying, to, trying to find out the distance from the center of gravity in the materials. Um, so how you end up doing this question, the part one, is try and turn it into an I-beam. So here we're going to have a I-beam. Um, so I took the bottom section where it was solid and I've changed the width of the center section with the material B. Um, so as you see with the I-beam, it still has the top and the bottom. They're still both material A and they're still the same thickness, same width of the, uh, the overall uh, ends. And then the centre section is still 15 metres height. However, we are going to be changing the base of the new material A put into the centre section. So the, the base width is going to change. So when we look at the centre section, and we know that the formula for flexural stiffness is Young's modulus of the material multiplied by the second moment of inertia. So when we're looking at the sec uh, centre section, we know that the, if it has to be the same flexural modulus, then the Young's modulus and the second moment of inertia uh, for before and after have to be the same. So the Young's modulus of material B then multiplied by the second moment of inertia of the solid, which I'm just calling the non-I beam, I'm calling it the solid. And then that, that's supposed to be equal to then the Young's modulus of material A, which is the uh, I beam, um, multiplied by the second moment of inertia of the I of the I center section of the I beam. So that will give us the same flexural modulus uh, for before and after. So just to just to flesh this out, we know that we know that the second moment of inertia for, um, I guess, a s square rectang rectangle would be the base by the height cubed divided by 12. So you take the base of this center section, multiply it by the height, cube the height, and then divide by 12. So if we were to flesh this out, we'd have this, We'd have base height cubed over 12. And on this side, EA, and then multiply it by BI, and height cubed, and that's divided by 12. So I put the BI in here because there's going to be a new base, the uh, material A inside. So I guess you can cancel out the 12s. Cancel out the h cubed, and then what you're left with is doing a bit of rearranging. You're left with b i equals b multiplied by Young's modulus of b divided by the Young's modulus of a. So we know that b. And I don't mean to scare you, but I use meters. I'm going to be using meters for this. I found it easier to 
use meters than messing around with millimeters and things like that. So uh, 0 0.015 and then it's just the ratio so I'm, for this one just because it's the ratio I'm just gonna use it in its normal form 1.4 2.8 so that'll give us the base of material A in the center so when we do that we find out that it's actually half of the original width 0 0.0075 meters so that's our base that's the um the chunk of this that would give us uh, the same flexural modulus as the question so that's how you'd find this part you can do this in um, millimeters if you wanted to but we'll move on to the second question now so we have the Young's modulus of material A multiplied by the um, multiplied by second area um, of inertia so second area of inertia is going to be the way we do this is you kind of take a box so the base and the height of everything and then you take the sec the middle portion the base and the height of that of the middle portion and then you add in the center bit so that would be like this so if you can imagine you're only able to use the base and the height so it would be the easiest way to get the whole thing base and the height of the whole thing take away the center thing and then add on the center thing that actually has material in it uh, which we know by now by having the 7.5 millimeters base of this material so to do this you have I equals to base by height um, over 12 sorry it's cubed um, take away base by I'm gonna call it height 1 over 12 and add on so this is cubed 2 and then add on base I uh, by height 1 cubed this time and divide that by 12 so when you fill all this out then you have and again I'm going to do this in meters so if you're doing it in millimeters just um, you'd be able to convert pretty fast in your head I'd say that's cubed divided by 12 take away the base which is 15 millimeters with the height which would be 15 millimeters just for the center section and then that is divided by 12 so notice that I use the full width of the uh, of the I-beam and then I'm gonna add on the new width which is seven and a half and based by height which is still 15 that's cubed divided by 12 and now oh yes, I can keep going so when you work all this out you'll find out that it comes out as 7.89 by 10 to the minus 9 meters to the power of 4 so it's done in meters to the power of 4 and then flexural stiffness which is E multiplied by I, E A multiplied by I is 2.8 gigapascals, so that's by 10 to the power of 9 pascals, and then multiply that by 7.89 by 10 to the minus 
9 meters to the power of 4. So that leaves you at roughly 22 pascals as flexural stiffness. So this is the answer. Keep in mind as well that um, the length of what we're looking at is kind of taken it's taken kind of as one meter so the length would, would have been one uh, so the flexural modulus of like a 2d or a sorry 3d uh, object would be ei over l so we're kind of just saying that l is equal to one so that's 22 pascals um flexural stiffness per length of per length of uh i guess the sandwich that we're looking at at the start or even i-beam um, so the third part of the question is to find out the weight change um, with using one material over the other. So I guess weight can be seen as gravity by mass. And then we're given the density of the, we're given the density. So density of the material so say, for example, material A would be equal to the mass of material A multiplied the volume of, mat of material A. As I was saying before, um, the length of what we're looking at is 1. Uh, so the volume will be area of, of the A, so of the centre section where A was being used, where material A was being used, and uh, then, you know, just multiply the area by, I guess, 1, um, but you don't even have to put that in. Uh, so if you work that around, then then you're looking at the, at the mass of A being density of A, and then you can break out the volume into um, width so that would be the base base by height 1 so that's just the height of the center section and then L which is equal to 1 so I could almost just take that out you know so then we have our mass equal to, what was it, 1500 uh, kilograms per meter cubed. The base is, sorry, this is material A. So this would be the, uh, the base of the I-beam. So this is the uh, stronger material that was uh, thinner. And then this would be 0 0.0075 meters. Um, the height is still 15. Mm, no, that's a 1. And then 1 obviously for length. So then that gives us the mass of A, which is 0 0.1688 uh, kg. Per meter length. Um, yeah, so every meter this grows, this will this will become 0 0.18, 0 0.1688 uh, heavier. Um, so then we can work out that the weight is 1.65 um, newtons per meter length. Just gonna go P M L. So that's material A anyway. So the only difference between material B uh, is that we're looking at we're looking at a different density. We're looking at a different base, which is the the full width of the of the uh, section, and we're looking at the same height. 
we're looking at the same height and obviously the same length. I should probably just not even put that in anymore. Um, material B, then I think that's yeah, it's 500 uh, kg per, per meter cubed. The base then is 15 millimeters. And the height is also 15 millimeters. So then you get mass of B equal to 0 0.1125 kg per meter length. Every meter the sandwich grows, this gets 0.1125 kg uh, heavier. So then you do the same thing get the weight so that's the kg or sorry the mass by gravity which is 9.81 meters per second squared and then that gives you 1.1 newtons per meter length so then to look at the difference between us you can look at the weight which is larger or sorry um tougher material or sorry not even tougher stiffer material um, minus less stiff material and you can see that what do I do here Maybe, no, not the sum of delta whatever the delta weight between the two of them is 0 0.55 newtons uh, per meter length so that's the difference between the two of them and looking at the difference in the masses you have 0.1688 minus 0.1125 so that's delta of mass is 0 0.0563 kg per meter length yeah so that's the difference in weight and uh, mass between the two of them. I'd probably put both answers down on the on the exam, um, just in case you're looking for one or the other. You just don't really know. Um, yeah, so that's that's that question answered.